And the first runner up is California. And so Miss USA 2006 is Kentucky. What a moment. <laughs> what a moment. <laughs> Watching that back must be so amazing. It's like another world. I mean, that was 13 years ago. Almost 13 years ago. We don't want to bring back 2006. <laughs> yeah, we leave was. 2006 <laughs> and 2006. <It's> but <laughs> <laughs> well, this has, we have Miss USA 2006, Tara Connor. She's now a recovery advocate, <laughs> motivational speaker, and TV personality. Yes. In 2006, shortly after being crowned Miss USA, she entered the Karen Treatment Center for Alcohol and Drug Addiction. Mm -hmm. You're with us here to talk about your road to recovery and mm -hmm. how to help other people. We also have Carrie Thayer from the Hope Center yeah. here in Lexington yes. to talk about how you guys are working together to mm -hmm. do this. Thank yeah. you both so much for being here. Thank, Thank you, you for, having for having us. No, truly. I'm so excited to have both of you here. You being back in Kentucky, how's uh -huh. that feel? I love being in Kentucky because it's home. You know, I, I grew up here and I have a very soft place in my heart. So anytime someone in the recovery world reaches out in Kentucky, I'm like, bring me in, bring me in, bring me in, because I have gone through it. I know what it's like to think that the addict is just the old man that lives underneath the bridge. When they were trying to tell me when I was Miss, Miss USA that I had a drug problem, I was like, you're crazy, <laughs> <laughs> because I bought into the stigma that still very much exists around this issue, and now I know that we all are being affected. It's killing our kids, and we as a nation need to come together and especially as a community because we have so many people that are suffering but they're so afraid of looking bad that they won't come forward so my goal as a human is just to say you know this is a disease that does not discriminate you're not a bad person that's trying to act good you are a sick person that needs to get well right. and there are resources out there and so I'm so excited to be here with the Hope Center. Well, there is such a stigma involved in so much. And we were talking earlier, yeah. women hold that stigma, yes. sometimes more so than men. In Kentucky, it's vital that mm -hmm. we come forward and help because our state is in the top part of the country uh -huh. as far as opioid abuse right. and drug and death. And that was my jam. I was absolutely an opioid addict. And, you know, that came from high school. I would, they were being passed around the school, you know, back in 2002 when I was in, oh my gosh, I'm getting old. Oh <laughs> Don't say God. that because I'm right there with you. Anyway, <laughs> I'm growing Ooh, up. Yes. But, um, it, you know, it, it, it's so accessible to so many kids and now that the opioid crisis is turning into heroin and fentanyl. You know, people are pa playing Russian roulette with their life every time they use, and a lot of people aren't making it. And so it's, it's really scary, and, and we're losing really amazing people that aren't making a, you know, people who are like, you're making the choice to do that. And it's like, well, if you're an addict, there's not a choice. Right. It's a necessity. And that's, that's hard to get into a lot of people's minds as well. And that's why you're teaming up with the Hope Center here mm -hmm. because you do a great job of doing peer-to-peer -peer mm -hmm. help. Mm -hmm. And that kind of, does that open it up for yes. people to be more open? Absolutely. So at the Hope Center, our program, for, we have one for men and one for women. And it's a long-term residential yes. program. So it's a six to eight month program of really um, looking at the, themselves and figuring out um, their past and what they need to look at mm -hmm. and um, what is causing them to use. So mm -hmm. it's a really um, great part of the program to have the peers uh, that have been through the program mm -hmm. helping those who are first coming in. Sure. Mm -hmm. So that's very impactful and it also gives them a sense of community because mm -hmm. a lot of them have been on the streets or um, you know, not had a place where they really belonged in a long time. Right. So the Hope Center recovery programs are helping in that way as well. Yeah, and what I love about the Hope Center is that it's long-term treatment because I think a lot of people have this idea that you just go into a detox and that you'll be fine or just put the plug in the jug or, you know, let me go to a 30-day facility and get through it. I mean, when I went through treatment, I wanted to stay in long-term treatment because I felt safe for the first time in my life and I felt like I belonged for the first time in my life. And so they are affording people the opportunity to get the long-term treatment that they need because it's a it's a process. It's not something that can be licked in just a few days or sure. a month. And it has to be scary knowing that it can come back at any other time mm -hmm. and anything can trigger it to come back 
Yeah, and you know, addiction is a, it's kind of a disease of a threefold nature. So, you know, people who have crossed that invisible line into addiction or alcoholism, once they put one in, they have no control. They call it the phenomenon of craving. And so you'll put your life on the line to get the next one. And I've absolutely done that in my life. And then when you get separated, your mind will say, I convinced me from a sober state to get loaded again, right? So we have a mind that will convince us every single time, this time it's going to be different, this time I can drink like a lady and right. not do silly things, you know? And, um, and then you just have this unmanageability in your spirit. It's like an emotional sickness where you're constantly uncomfortable looking for something outside of you to make you feel comfortable in your skin. And so you have to treat all three parts of that. It's, it's amazing the work that you're doing and that you're able to take your experience and help so many other people, which you're doing so tonight with mm -hmm. the Hope Center. Yes. Yeah. yeah, this is our big event tonight. Mm -hmm. It's the Ball Homes Night of Hope at the Opera House. So we're very excited to have Tara here because she really speaks to what the Hope Center is all about and what our mission is. And that's helping people to live a happier, healthier, mm -hmm. um, sober life as well. Sure. And people are still invited to come on out and listen to Tara yeah, speak. Yeah, there's still tickets available. There's still some level two tickets. I think we're almost sold out of level one, but there's some level two tickets. We'd love to have um, mm -hmm. the community come out and support uh, Tara's message and what the Hope Center does. For sure. Now, real quick, Tara, you are doing all kinds of big things across the country. Tell yeah. us kind of your next get step. So I am a motivational speaker, so I speak on addiction, recovery, just trying to find your power, just being a woman and being real. Mm -hmm. I try to invite people to be 100% who they are and feel safe to do so. And then I just started a new talk show called Real Talk 100 with a good friend of mine named Jessica Landon. She's awesome. also a recovery advocate, so you can find that on evertalktv.com or Roku, Apple TV. And yeah, and I just speak. I just, yeah, <laughs> like, give me a mic. No, we, we like being genuine and authentic yes. and, and allowing people to be who they are. Yeah, people need to see that. They, we see so much of the Instagram highlights mm -hmm. of everyone's life. And, you know, I like to keep it real and let people know that life gets lifey and that's okay. We can all be honest and get through it together. And there's no shame in being a human being. So. Absolutely. Life gets lifey. I yeah. like it. And there is <laughs> Tara's information right there. You have Instagram speaking of, mm -hmm. but you're keeping it real. I checked out your Instagram. Yeah. Congratulations. You are, are engaged, married? I just got married a year ago. We just celebrated one year. We made it. See, there you go. Oh, look well, at that. Re <laughs> recovery is possible. Well, <laughs> you are you are thriving and helping others. Thank, Thank you, you both so much for being here. Definitely check out the event tonight. Yes. There's tickets yeah. still available. Please come back to Kentucky. Come on. Co-host the show. We can get real. All right. I would <laughs> love that. Well, we appreciate you. Have a great night tonight. Guess what? Tomorrow's Friday. Ah! <laughs>